What up y'all, it's Titar, and today we're going to be talking more about IOC. I might have figured out what happened between IOC and Pokemon. We're just going to talk about this video. So we'll end at the conclusion, but we're going to start at the top of this rabbit hole, which stems from something Odd Riddler Koo tweeted, right? Which is when people were asking them whether IOC is working on another game, he said that they were out long before. And obviously y'all know my take on this. It struck me as odd because there should be like no reason at all to fire ILCA and stop them from working on games unless ILCA was being a nuisance in the sense that they weren't cooperating and all that. But I mean, being a nuisance and all that would usually mean they're a bad developer, but they did go on to make other games anyway. So this led me to trying to research them in my own way and figure out what might have happened to ILCA and why Ku would be saying ILCA was out long before. And so we will start at the top. The very first point to start with is the notion that exists right now that Pokemon was unhappy with ILCA and their final product of BDSP. And where I got this notion from, I talked about this in a previous video, is from Riddler Koo. Yeah, st circling straight back to him. It's this tweet here, which was posted about five weeks before the end of this came out. So it's a very recent tweet, November 2nd. And Riddler Koo says, TPC was not quite pleased with what Eruka had done to the brand. Upside down smiley face. Now, TPC is the Pokemon company, and Iruka is ILCA. ILCA's name in Japanese is the following. Iruka. It literally just means Iruka Co. Limited. So now you know who Iruka is. So look at this tweet. The Pokemon company was not quite pleased with what ILCA had done to the brand. This is where the notion comes from. Straight from the faucet of truth. And so you can use this point right here to jump to the conclusion of this video, which is this is why Pokemon would be so unhappy that now ILCA is out long before. And that works as an answer to this. But then we get to what I was talking about last time, which is how could Pokemon be unhappy with ILCA? You see, Masada was the director of Brilliant Diamond and Shiny Pro, along with another person who I believe was on the ILCA side. So he was directing the game and overseeing the entire process that was going on. Whatever BDSP was delivered as to us, Masada knew. The freaking Pokemon company knew. So if you're working with ILCA all this time and you knew what BDSP was before you put it out, how do you then just turn around and lead to this cool tweet where the Pokemon company was not quite pleased with ILCA? As far as I know, when it comes to making video games, the producers and the directors, it's a team effort, but they're the ones at the top controlling the flow of stuff and controlling what's happening. I mean, I could go to the comments, but no one's really talking about how reverse this is. Clearly, what we're seeing here is a contradiction. And so that leads me to re-looking at the way Ku wrote this, which is that the Pokemon company was not quite pleased with what LCA had done to the brand. And then this takes it a step deeper. They're unhappy with what IOCA did to the Pokemon brand. How does that make sense? Especially after my rant a couple of videos ago. How could Pokemon turn around and say, IOCA, you ruined the brand? You're the Pokemon company. You allowed that to happen. Am I wrong? So then it leads me to thinking it's some kind of power move, like how they used to do back in the day where you scapegoat someone, right? You know, war leaders and all. If they make a mistake, you pin it on someone else and say they did it. And so that it keeps you with a certain clean image to everyone else. Now, I don't, I'm not going to go and say Pokemon did that, also for legal reasons. But when you have this wording from Ku, it's so bold. He's claiming his source knows the mindset of the Pokemon company. A mindset that doesn't really make sense. And so it makes me wonder if the Pokemon company signed off on the idea of making Chibi remakes for Diamond and Pearl. And then when they saw the response, they decided to do a 180. And that gets crazy, right? I'm starting a whole conspiracy here because I've shown you. LCA can make other games. This is when we get to our second point. I already said in the last video they made One Piece Odyssey, which... It doesn't have the worst reviews or the best reviews, but it's generally around a 7 out of 10. And the overworld looks very beautiful. And if you want to see more... So, you know Akira Toriyama, rest in peace. He had a manga in 2000 called Sandland. Akira Toriyama had a game 
for Sandland made by IOCA that's coming out in 2024. So, of all the companies he could go to to develop a game, if Alci was really that poor and incapable, and as far as I know, he was involved with the process of making this game. And so Alci is clearly not incompetent. I mean, I've already said this, right? And then this leads me to part three of my thought process and research, which is, okay, so if Alci is kicked out, let's follow Alci's footprints and see where they are now. And so what I found out is that Alci teamed up with Bandai and opened a new company where IOC and them have an almost 50-50 split. It's 49-51, so Bandai has the majority. But they teamed up and made a whole new company to work on Ace Combat Games, which is a video game series. It's a very old game that started in 1995. Their latest one came out in 2019, and it's been almost five years since. This is what they opened that company for, to make the next Ace Combat game. Which Ace Combat is not a poo series at all. Ace Combat 7, the one that came out in 2019, as of November 2023, it sold 5 million units. That is a huge amount of sales. For a video game series that disappeared 8 years ago, then suddenly returns to not just be dead and irrelevant, but sell 4 times the amount? So you tell me, is Alcy incompetent or are they making moves? And it makes you think, right? Okay, if Alcy has the time to open this company with Bandai, maybe Pokemon did let them go. BDSB came out in November of 2021, right? A couple months later, One Piece Odyssey is announced for a big monumental occasion, by the way, for One Piece's 25th anniversary. Look who they went and got for that. And that ended up coming out in January of the next year, 2023. So that's about a year gap between BDSB and One Piece. Uh, and now you would imagine they were working with both Pokemon and Bandai at this time. You know, you can't make that One Piece game in just a year. And then suddenly they're not working with Pokemon anymore. And they formed this company with Bandai and are working even closely with them. So if you plug this idea into what Ku tweeted, IOC was out long before. The Pokemon company was not quite pleased with what IOC had done to the brand upside down smiley face. It kind of paints a picture, right? Kind of sounds like Pokemon could have dropped them. And now they're just closely working with Bandai. Also, I know I'm saying Bandai wrong, bro. I, I go back and forth. Goodness, just go into the comments. We want no more Aosia main Pokemon games. Ha ha ha. I mean, honestly, they should be displeased. Hopefully that means they aren't developing any future titles anymore. Am I crazy? I mean, I said this last time, don't, I shouldn't go on Twitter, it makes me stupid, but the more I keep reading people okay with, or pooing on IOCA, makes me wonder if I'm the one who's stupid for saying they weren't the problem. And yeah, I pretty much said what I wanted to in this video. I know it's a weird opinion that I have, but I don't think IOCA was the problem. And if for some reason, Ku's information is correct and Pokemon let them go, regardless of what that reason is, I think Pokemon is stupid for that. I'll say it could have been a super helpful piece to them. And I stand by the idea that they're capable developers. Anyhow, that's pretty much it. I'll see you on the next one. Take care. You're free to disagree with me, by the way.